welcome back. So, let's see. That was probably like a second for you guys. Hmm. Ah. You could argue that Jafar is not powerful enough to hypnotize the Sultan in this way. But it seems he has plenty other tools at his disposal. It seems unlikely that he would be able to accomplish this without the lamp. Unless he was trying to do this without bloodshed. Thanks, Jafar. The movie... Now, this is a big title. The movie, from Jafar's perspective. Perspective is a big word. Anyway, let's review. We have, uh, we have Jafar, who is fed up with how the Sultan is refusing to take his job seriously. Okay, that could get a little frustrating. Poverty and homelessness is run rampant. Rampant. Ram, rampant? I don't know. The princess is uh, the princess is antagonizing her suitors, and the sultan is just standing by. These are a lot of big words. I don't know what they mean, but they're a lot of big words. Whoa! There's a big tiger. <laughs> the law says Jasmine has to marry within the next few days, but she refuses because she wants to live. <laughs> but I Love. So Jafar decides he needs to take matters in his own hands. <laughs> I must take matters in my own hands. If you know what I mean. He's been hypnotizing the Sultan so far to keep things running. But they're not enough anymore. Jafar decides he needs to become Sultan himself. The And right when the Sultan has wronged also allowing Jasmine to marry whoever she wants. That's a great way to run a kingdom. In my words, I think Princess Mary Prince. I mean, it was even said in Sleeping Beauty. Princess Mary Prince. And then they go schmudgy. Meanwhile, Jasmine runs away and falls for a homeless thief. Great, Disney. You're teaching kids that it's okay to fall for homeless thieves. Who only likes her for her looks, as evidenced by how he describes her to the genie. To the genie? To genie. He's an actual person. He's an actual character. Genie. Ow, that hurt my chin. Of course, the sultan is old and could die soon. Okay, don't worry, guys, I wasn't really dead. <clears throat> if Jasmine is only ha, doesn't marry in time, then the city will fall into turmoil. But Jasmine selfishly neglects her responsibility until the guards finally find her. Ha! One jump in front of another. Ooh, what's this? I don't know. I might put it down. Jafar then has no choice but to save the city by hypnotizing the sultan into arranging a marriage between him and Jasmine. He's trying to save the city. City? Whatever. He's trying to save the kingdom because he's a good guy. Okay? Let him save the kingdom, even though he has a curly cutie. But then, some random prince no one has ever heard of from a town no one has ever heard of bombards the palace with a parade. The guy certainly does not act or talk like a prince, but the sultan doesn't care about how shady the situation is. What? My name is, what? My name is Wiki 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 Slim Shady. Of course, the prince is Aladdin, who tricked the genie into breaking him out of the cave without wishing for it, and then made a promise that he'd free the genie later, even though he apparently didn't intend to keep that promise. Aladdin sneaks into Jasmine's chambers at night and whisks her away for, across the world. Oh, and he lies to her again about who he really is by claiming he was a prince all along. Doesn't seem like a good guy, does he? A whole new world! A dancing thing I never knew! Jafar knows that the prince is a fraud, so he arranges to have him disposed of bef 
disposed of before he ruins the entire kingdom. But Aladdin escapes thanks to the journey, who he betrays by going back on his promise to free him. <sighs> Aladdin decides it's more important to keep the genie around in order to keep the prince act up. <laughs> Seems like this whole story is run by Aladdin. But Jafar realizes that the prince is actually Aladdin. Took you a long time to figure that one out. So, he steals his lamp back and commands the genie to make him sultan. He also wishes for power, hoping that it will protect Agrabah from the country that just found out their prince they sent to marry Jasmine was attacked by a tiger. Jafar even places the kingdom on a hill to make it more secure stronghold. Jeez, guys. Jafar is the good guy. Aladdin's the bad guy. You can definitely see that. Alas, Aladdin returns and tricks Jafar into becoming a genie, thus imprisoning him. Wow, he even plays mind games. We could also talk about the return of Jafar, which states, with the same merchant singing Agrabarian Nights, by the way. But it's pretty much the same story. Oh, and I'm not the only person to argue for the case of Jafar. In fact, there's an entire musical based on this concept called Twisted, which you may watch it. Sorry. Um, and if you do search the story Twisted, uh, it does contains some material not suitable for children. I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. So, I don't know. So, the merchant. The obvious question here is, why would the merchant tell us the lamp is essentially useless? At the end of Aladdin, the merchant tells us that the genie is free. That definitely explains how the merchant would have his hands on it without just using it himself. The only answer I can think of is that he wants to sell the lamp because it's rare, and it's no ordinary lamp. This is the lamp that Aladdin used to defeat the evil Jafar. Hear the tale of the magical genie what would summon entire parades that disappear without any explanation. Can you see how this hyperbole and twisted of the story would convince someone that the lamp would be cool to have, even if the story isn't accurate? This is the same sales tactics that people make even today, but especially during those times when street merchants would shout extravagant sales pitches from the corner. So, Disney just made a like two-hour commercial for a lamp that isn't a real product. Preach! Preach it! The lesson. Am I overthinking this? No, of course. But I didn't get into this because I wanted to prove something is true. Rather, I recognized the value in turning the story on its head to learn a new lesson. A whole new lesson! It doesn't really rhyme or make sense. The, me the message here is that sometimes things aren't all what they seem. Sure, Aladdin is probably a cool guy but, and Jafar is a jerk, but my article may have made you doubt that a little. And that's just because it's easy to twist the story around and blur the line. Blur the lines. I know you want it. And blur the lines between good and evil, even though they are clearly distinct at the same time. That said, which version of Jafar do you prefer? Wow, this video is way too long. I do have to say sorry that I was looking up the whole time. It is literally on my computer as we speak. <clears throat> as we speak. So I'm sorry I was looking up my computer the whole time, but I did not want to mess up this amazing theory. And I did add a little bit of myself to it, so I hoped you liked it. Um, the, the address to go is johnnegroni.com slash 2014 slash 06 slash 09 slash what if Jafar was good all along. 
and in between what if Jafar was good all along, there are hyphens, slash. So just type that in, da -da 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 -da, and you will get this amazing story for free. Free. For free. Bedtime stories. Anyway, so I guess, um, wait, first I have to say, I know it's not the weekend, but yahoo. Anyway, so I guess, do you, what? Write that in the comments below. What? what version of Jafar do you prefer? And I hopefully will be back on the weekends. Oh, yes. <clears throat> and I don't know if I did, but if the videos that I have posted before without uh, the intro and outro because my computer wasn't the greatest, hopefully they are fixed. And if it's not, and if this video is in two parts, I am completely sorry. Anyway, I guess I'm going to have to see you later. Adios.